Hello friends, welcome to the special lecture symbolic expression, expression and today we have Manisha Sharma with us for the lang sign language expert and the theme of today's discussion is the Italian cinema and neorealism. And in the earlier lecture on uh, Italian cinema, we talked about the kind of characteristics of the Italian cinema in the context of the neorealist films and how the post-war cinema, especially the Second World War, where we find that how the uh, Italian cinema which was concerned with neorealism, it was talking in the framework of the non-professional actors and simple direction and non-melodramatic non uh, kind of a positioning or presentation of those kinds of themes and they were dealing with the issues of poverty, unemployment and the other socio-economic problems of those times. And we also talked about that how the filmmakers like uh, Rosalini, Visconti, De Sica, those who are considered uh, to be the harbingers of uh, this particular uh, theme or this particular genre of films which was made and how not only uh, the neorealism in Italian cinema but uh, we find that neorealist films films they were able to influence uh, the films in other regions of the world as well. And when you talk about how in those times how it was influenced by uh, the literary uh, Giovanni Verga and how Giovanni Verga's work was able to influence the neuralist filmmakers and uh, the people those who were associated in the scripting department like Zavatini, how they were also talking in the framework that how neuralist films they should uh, try to convey that kind of a meaningful aspects which was concerned with cinema. And we also talked about uh, the Nazi cinema uh, where we find that Lenny Riefenstahl, how Lenny Riefenstahl films Triumph of the Will and Olympia, they were trying, they were being made in the uh, framework where they had to in a way praise the Nazi rule. So, in that particular context when we try to see neorealism and neorealism especially in the Italian cinema, then we find that neorealism was asking to make cinema more meaningful and purposeful in nature and how the people those who have been associated in terms of uh, writing about films whether the Andre Baza or the other scholars like Umberto Barbaro in Italy and George Sedol in France and all of them how they try to see films in that particular framework. And today we will uh, talk about that how uh, the kind of a decline of a neorealism could be seen and Giulio Andrewati who was the director of the performing arts, uh, he was being given the extensive powers by the government and because of which we find Andrewati laws in 1949 and how the state was able to use its total political power and it took advantage of the dependence of cinema on the industrial uh, sector in the structure. And then we find that the financial exigencies uh, they were being there to subdue its harshness as well and the survival of the pre-war uh, stylistic techniques uh, that was another reason in that sense where we find that uh, neuralism declined. And when you talk about neuralism, we also talk about its association with the PCI or the Italian Communist Party and the left and how it became a target of the Christian Democrats uh, who had the substantial support from the US owing to the global battle against communism. And the success of the Italian films in US and the rising investment of the American capital in the Italian film industry, they created the commercialized and corrupt uh, imitations of uh, neorealism. And we find when you talk about the kind of films which were being made, obsession was one where Andre Baza says that it is a kind of cinema. Uh, opposed to the white telephone films and hopeful bourgeoisie intrigues of the official cinema. And it was also seen as some sort of an authentic portrayal of the proletarian life and how it outraged the Italian fascist government. So, we find that under the fascist uh, films they suffered a strict censorship and the script of the film was signed by Alicata, Visconti, Puccini, Pietrangeli and the Santis and it was revised by Moravia. So, uh, we find that uh, the people those who were associated uh, initially with the films, the, all of them they either associated with the communists or they were themselves communists as well and their concerns were also such that uh, they were ready to in a way fight with the establishment. And uh, when you talk about uh, some of the films like uh, Germany Year Zero, 
and how these films uh, they pose certain kind of questions that uh, what could have forced Germans to this kind of a tragedy. And it is in a way given that it was connected to some kind of a corrupt idea or an idea that encourages forsaking of humility for the cult of bravery, adulation of vigor rather than weakness, pride against humility. And the example which is shown in the film is in the framework of Edmund's school teacher, Herr Ering. And uh, Herr Enning, uh, he was an reconstructed Nazi and a homosexual who tells Edmund that the strong are meant to live and weak uh, to perish. So these are the kinds of uh, kinds of ideas which were being talked about in these kinds of films. And when filmmakers uh, they in a way talked about them in that particular context, then they tried to place certain meanings on them. Rosalini uh, says that the, her Enning's individual sexual depravity is a symbolic of uh, the wider ethical and the philosophical uh, depravity uh, which was concerned with Nazism. And in this film we also find that Ingrid who is a lesbian Nazi of the Roma Chita Aperta also in functions in the similar manner. And uh, when you talk about the Roma Chita Aperta or the Rome uh, Open City which was uh, directed by Rosalini, he is also trying to communicate this kind of an idea. And this idea of Nazism that so obsesses uh, Rosalini uh, for it is this corrupt idea that encourages all specific individual corruption that is contained in the film. So, uh, we find that how such kind of portrayals or depictions uh, they were there in these uh, kinds of films and they were being talked about uh, by the filmmakers as well. And when you talk about other films like DC Cars, Bicycle Thieves, uh, which in a way talks about the issue of poverty and inequality and it also reflected the hunger, uh, poverty, unemployment and the kind of despair which was there. So, we find that uh, this film uh, had this kind of a universality of its theme and it represented the social consciousness and uh, it was summed up as a whole epo of hopelessness and frustration. So, uh, we find that uh, these kinds of films when they were being made especially uh, Bicycle Thieves or in Italian it was known as Ladri di Bicicleta and when these kinds of films they were being made and how when such kind of a cinema was also being shown to the audience across the world as Bimal Roy's uh, Dobi Gazamin is considered to be influenced by uh, Bicycle Thieves uh, because it had uh, those kinds of resonances not only in terms of the theme uh, but as well as uh, the treatment as well. So, uh, we find that uh, these kinds of filmmakers they were in a way trying to convey uh, the reality of those times. And in other films uh, as well we find that these kinds of picturizations they were there when you talk of Umberto Di then it accepts the inequality and the poverty as the inevitable reality and advances to tackle with understanding and sympathy. And in 1947 we find that how Visconti when he went to Sicily, uh, Sicily with some money advanced by the communist party to shoot a short documentary later called as La Terra Trema and or the earth trembles. The film was a realistic portrayal of the hardships which were faced by the fishermen in their struggle for the survival and genuinely portrays the environment as well as uh, the surroundings. So, we find that this uh, particular film La Terra Trema uh, which was uh, dealing with uh, Sicily of uh, that particular period and how it was trying to convey some kind of a reality of uh, those times. Then uh, we also see as uh, we talked about uh, uh, Bicycle Thieves that how uh, the role of the sun in this particular film it was some sort of a moral eye to the entire film. So, in a in a scene in, a, in the film we find that the op open embarrassment of the father is there when he is exposed on the road and this kind of a sigh, uh, this kind of a description when you see uh, when it is being compared with the kind of a reality uh, when the son was a witness to it. So, it in a way compounded uh, that uh, that kind of a situation in which father was and when father was thinking of stealing the bicycle in that particular scene and the quiet presence of the young boy who guesses about his thinking is brutal to the limit of obscenity in the sense that 
the kind of uh, uh, the kind of shame which that uh, uh, that character felt that he was being caught when uh, when when he was trying to steal the bicycle in front of his son and his son was acting as some sort of a moral eye to that uh, particular scene as well as to the entire film as well that w- what should be the option which a father should follow so all these things they they are being talked about in this particular film and when you talk about the other kinds of films like vittorio de sica's uh, shoe shine and how it, it tells the story of the victimized lives of the child shoe blacks who are under the pressure for their continued existence on the streets of post war rome and in this film we find that the value judgment of the adult world is done not by the scrutinizing uh, it in its own terms but by contrasting it with uh, virtuousness and the innocence of the, uh, uh, childhood and uh, we find that all these kinds of films when they were being shown in those times they were able to create uh, that kind of an impact on the audience as well and uh, as i told you that how the rome open city uh, when it was being made by rossellini and how it was trying to depict the italian life under the nazi occupation when italy was being captured by uh, the nazi germany it reflects uh, some kind of a stark juxtaposition of the good a uh, resistance and the evil poverty germans and the italian allies and the positive figures in the film like pina francesco don pietro and manfredi they share the common beliefs and the vision which francesco refers to an impending spring time in italy and uh, characters like marina and pina's sister loretta they are enamored by the superficial values of cafe society in consumer goods which are offered uh, by the germans so such uh, kinds of scenes they are trying to in a way uh, convey the issue of ethics or the kind of moral dimensions which are there in this particular film then there were other films which are talking in the framework of other kinds of ideas and when you tend to see pesa uh, which was made by rosalini it discarded the use of the professional actors and it exhibited only a few soldiers a couple of explosions and burning houses so in this film there was hardly an attempt to portray the genuine anxiety or to show uh, the real heroics and in one of the episodes in this particular film which is known as the florence episode the sequence of the execution of the fascists they appear so convincingly real precisely because it takes place very very quickly and they are dragged into and out of the frame and summarily they are killed without any fanfare in a few seconds so we find that the presentation of images in uh, such a manner that they exhume or uh, they they in a way try to portray the reality in such a manner that there is no melodramatic effect or it is not being in a done, uh, done in a manner where there is a lot of fanfare associated with it so uh, it is much more closer to a, to the reality and it uh, conveys the idea of dedramatization where they don't have to dramatize the kind of events in this particular fashion so we find that any kind of cliche emotions which are there which are not necessary they were being rejected by uh, the neorealist and they try to understand a character in uh, their immediate condition and they wanted the spectators reaction to flow from the image facts and not the preconceived notions of the character so in that way the idea was to dramatize essential dramatic situations and the moments in the filmmakers they reject to put it in order or any hierarchy or significance uh, to the event so every event was given uh, some uh, kind of a, n- not any kind of an importance rather they were considered to be mundane in nature they were considered to be day to day affairs and this is how they were being presented to the audience as well in the context of the way women they were being shown in these films we find that generally neorealism did not make eroticism as one of the driving forces of the narrative but in some of the films like bitter rise uh, made by de santis most prominent intrusion is that of undisguised eroticism which silvana introduces into the otherwise neorealist canon so neorealism recognized sexuality of its own characters in premarital pregnancies of pina in open city and of maria in umberto di and when de santis he denies any kind of erotic ente- uh, uh, kind of intent which is there and he explaining that in this film he was thinking not much of eroticism as of liberation desiring to portray men women and society in their usual primeval honesty 
So, DeSantis does not really succeed in bitter eyes as Silvana is the center of the film with her physical presence creating an international reputation for herself as type of pin up film was supposed to denounce. So, there were other films when you talk about when you talk about neorealism we find that how some kind of contradictions or deviations could also be seen and there was a film called Miracle in Milan in 1953 by DC Ka and how it introduced a component of fantasy into the neorealist situation. It is a fairy tale replete with magical incidents. So, we find that how neorealist cinema was in a way trying to uh, show the reality and on the other hand when the neorealist films when they tend, tended to incorporate the issues of fantasy or when they were being shown in a fairy tale then they were trying to in a way contradict or trying to deviate from uh, the kind of their position. And uh, we find that scholars or uh, theoreticians like Barbaro they point out the violation of the endless technique in zoom shot from Umberto's window to cobblestones below where the obtrusive camera work and its subjectivity is a suggestive of Umberto's contemplation of a jump to death as a resolution of his dilemma. And uh, another film called Paisa which uh, we find that the use of flashback is a departure or a new feature in a narrative structure. So, we find that the theoreticians those who try to in a way compartmentalize uh, uh, neorealism in a particular uh, kind of fashion. So, they also in a way have to will have to understand that how it will try to uh, deviate from some kind of characteristics which were being seen to be the characteristics of uh, neorealism. And unless uh, new kinds of changes they will be incorporated uh, then the movement will not be enriched in any manner. And how the cast of the open city had vast experiences in the entertainment world that has also been uh, cited. The script of open city was rewritten as you can see on the screen repudiating the myth about neorealism and Rosalini's stylistic contribution to it that is improvisation. So, we find that how the open city or the Rome open city was in a way rewritten and it was trying to in a way reject the myths about the neorealism. And we also find that Rosalini's stylistic contribution was in that way of having a lot of improvisations. And when you tend to understand the kind of beliefs which were being associated with neorealism and how uh, in this uh, in, the, in, a, in a kind of structure which was there then how the Gestapo headquarter which heightens the drama uh, in the uh, in the Rome open city. And uh, when uh, you also talk about films like Bicycle Thieves that how they had a very huge budget and they had a cast of hundreds and uh, meticulously devised shooting style. And uh, we also find that the people those who were working in the open city they were had a lot of experience in the entertainment world. And the script of the film was written and rewritten thereby repudiating one of the myths about neorealism and Rosalini's stylistic uh, contribution as well. So, in that uh, sense when we try to understand neorealism then we find that it made certain kind of deviations, it made certain kind of uh, departures and these kinds of uh, deviations and departures they also in a way enriched the neorealist cinema as well. And uh, when we tend to understand uh, the kind of uh, importance of the neorealist films then we find that uh, various filmmakers those who were in a way uh, uh, in a way associated with the uh, neorealist films how they adapted uh, to their own uh, they had their own kind of film style or filmmaking style and how they in a way adapted their uh, personal film style in such a manner that they also incorporated uh, the various kinds of aspects which were concerned with neorealism. And the sincerity of uh, the people those who were associated with uh, neorealist films those who were the practitioners of neorealism uh, to portray the reality in a particular way was also unquestionable in that sense and how they were also in a way committed to the cause of neorealism was also beyond doubt in that sense. And we find that the filmmakers uh, like De Sica, Visconti, Rosalini and la later Federico Ferrini 
and in the context of women we talked about uh, bitter rice of uh, de santis and all these uh, filmmakers uh, they they said that how they were committed to their filmmaking processes and how they were trying to reject the earlier kind of a reality uh, which was concerned uh, with the fascist filmmaking where we find that the white telephone films of the earlier times they were being rejected by these filmmakers and uh, how some of them they were also concerned with the uh, in a way connected to the communist party and uh, the how the ideals of the communist party they were also being shown in their particular kind of uh, cinema and uh, we see that uh, their commitment to the ideals of uh, the communists uh, was also being reflected in their films and some of the script writers they also uh, belonged basically uh, to the communist uh, uh, communist ideology and or rather they had some kind of a sympathy uh, to the communist uh, kinds of ideals and this got reflected in in the kind of films which were being made by them so in that sense uh, when we tend to understand them when we tend to in a way uh, position them and when we tend to understand them in the context of uh, the kind of impact they were able to create worldwide uh, that was also very very important and we not only talk about the italian cinema uh, we also talk about uh, the german cinema where uh, we find that the nazi and the fascist principles both of them they were being shown and uh, when you see the rise of neo realism in italy then you try to position it in a framework of other other countries as well whether in the framework of india where we find that uh, neo realism as a movement also could be seen in the 1940s and 50s and some of the filmmakers they were influenced by uh, the films which were made in italy when they saw them and we also find that when the french uh, new wave came in the 1950s then how uh, the the cinema novo in uh, in the brazil when it emerged and uh, how uh, this a new kind of a cinema could be seen in the other countries as well and uh, when uh, we find that how the new realist cinema uh, when it interacted when it was being made in 1950s in a particular kind of framework then the subject range of the new realist cinema also broadened at that point of time and uh, the way it was dealing with a number of topical problems of that particular period uh, they also increased as well so in a way when we tend to understand neorealist films uh, we find that neorealist film, films they bore witness to the existence of the problems of those times and it was very very significant from that point of view and uh, how uh, it in a way influenced the filmmakers across the world and the various kinds of subjects which were important in a particular country uh, the, they were being shown in that particular film and some kind of a less sharp social reality having trust in the future it was also being shown uh, in in response to the kind of harshness uh, which was there in the earlier times so with this i'd like to end the discussion thank you very much